So I'm Kristen from AsiaTheNerd.com. So I appreciate you guys joining us today. I absolutely adored the first episodes that I've seen so far. So, you know, I was curious as, as you all as actors continue to dive into the many layers that these characters have as we, as we go through the different time periods, was there anything that you were surprised to learn about yourselves? That is a really, that's a great question. I would say something that I was surprised to learn about myself, mm, maybe just to me, like the true definition and what it means to be like ride or die or like just a good friend in general. Like, um, I think that it really, because Isabella is such a, she's a hardcore friend. Like she really does not, she doesn't mess around when it comes to her friends. And I think that for me, you know, she takes things a little, too far sometimes but I think for me um internally it also helped me not helped me but it made me kind of like think about my friendships and my relationships we um we filmed Vancouver in Vancouver so I was like you know when I show back up back home like what's the type of friend that I want to be to people how do I want to show up in other people's lives um and loyalty as well like really checking and making sure that the people around me are as loyal as the character that I'm playing and that I'm also loyal um showing that loyalty back to them Hi, I'm Rito. I'm from the Philippine Daily Inquirer. So I'm, I'm, I'm so thrilled to meet all of you. Um, one of the things that makes this show consistently compelling is uh, the characters, I call it delicious ambiguity. You never really know if you're seeing a person's real character. For, for, for each of you, uh, um, what did you do to channel your character's dark side? Because they're very likable, but how did you channel that? Um, for me, I used music was a really great tool. Um, I had a playlist for each version of Isabella. So a playlist for uh, summer 99, winter 99, and then summer 2000. Um, in my summer 2000s playlist, you know, it was really dark. Um, I, you know, listened to things that would get me in that mindset. And then also usually it depended on the scene, but just also taking time to myself beforehand, you know, making my trailer kind of dark and just sitting and, you know, sitting with all the thoughts and feelings that Isabella, um, is going through and that, you know, space in her life. Um, but I would say that music specifically, and then also another thing, hair, makeup and wardrobe, you know, when you're in those looks like it's hard not to kind of, you know, immerse yourself into that version of the character when you are looking so doth, doth, oh my gosh, goth and depressed. Um, it's hard not to like switch into that mode. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. It's like, it does come down to, you know, what you have on the outside kind of reflects the way that you're feeling on the inside. For Megan, especially, she's using that hard exterior to mask what she's going through um, and to protect herself from from the outside world um and yeah music too and I think it's all it's all really in the script too if you if you look at the page and you see what these young girls are going through it's not hard to imagine how difficult that would be and and to kind of tap into that you know um yeah I wish I had a goth look um I don't I I have pretty similar looks from both timelines. Um, so I, I never got to explore the dark side as much as these, these gals did. Um, but you know, later, later on in the season, like, uh, you know, it gets a little darker. Um, and I, I really just, um, I really just got to, got to have fun with it. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's fun to, to throw that bit of spice in there of like, okay, now I'm going to play someone who's really goth and depressed. You, you kind of like, feel like everybody has all those like feelings and and emotions inside them of sometimes and I always see those those kinds of scenes and those kinds of roles or moments of the character as like outlets to just kind of like let that stuff go it's fun you know you you throw on a playlist that reminds you of some angsty time in your life and then you're like yeah I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it roll hi this is Jamie Steinberg with Starry Constellation magazine each episode of Cruel Summer is so intense. It's edge of your seat watching. It's just a thrill right through and through. If each of you could talk about maybe what were your favorite episodes to film this season, even if you can't spill what happens, maybe a little bit about number wise, <laughs> Sadie. I think um, I think I might speak for Griffin and Lexi too when I say that 
uh, when we get towards the end, I think it's like end of seven, eight, and nine, we kind of, um, we start looking at what happens on the night of New Year's Eve and the day of New Year's and what that looks like. And, you know, it's kind of the climax. And those were some really, <laughs> some really intense shooting days for us. Um, there was a, it was, it got dark there for a minute and uh, it was intense. We leaned on each other a lot. Um, lots of, you know, night shoots and emotional scenes. And um, so those were, I don't know if they were fun to film, but they were really uh, rewarding to film. And it was really nice to do that with Griffin and Lexi. So those are, I have some good memories from that, even though it was a little, it was a little rough. I agree. I, those were like my favorite scenes to film, even though that they were like the hardest, but I just felt like, I don't know, something about like, we were all like snotting, crying together. <laughs> really, bond to, really uh, but yeah, I think that also just like the fact that, um, you know, the, the ensemble cast as well, it's such a big friend group, um, you know, all the scenes that we had together, especially like the pool party scenes, um, we just had a blast doing it. It genuinely felt like we were actually all partying together and just having fun. Um, so those are the best kind of moments where it's actually authentic. Yeah, I would, I would echo that. I think actually, though, I, I would go for the earlier episodes. I really enjoyed those kind of when we were all getting to know each other and uh, we would have those crazy long night shoots no better way to get to know somebody than to work with them for like <laughs> two weeks straight from <laughs> like 4 p.m to 5 a.m in a freezing cold pool in a freezing and you, you see every version of a person in those two weeks you see like how they are at their happiest how they are at their most stressed how they are when they're completely delirious uh and then you're also going through all that at the same time and I think it's like <laughs> It's the fastest way to get to become close with somebody. So, I mean, maybe not in terms of filming wise, but um, from like, like, I mean, scene wise, but in terms of like just filming and what I look back at as like the best, most fun episodes, I'm thinking early on night shoots because uh, they were brutal and they were in a way not fun at all, but <laughs> because we were all going through it together, it became really, really fun. I mean, there were nights that we were all, like there were seven of us huddled around a single heater, like cuddled on the ground with like four yeah. on top yeah. of us. And then there was like nights where we all brought our guitars to set, uh, me, Paul and Brayden. And then all three of us would just serenade everyone else for like a couple hours till it got annoying. <laughs> Whether we wanted to or not. Right. Yeah, we'd be playing the same seven songs over and over again. Honestly, not even seven. It was like the same four songs over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> that's part by Daniel Caesar got played maybe a hundred thousand times yeah. yeah definitely sounds fun <laughs> hi my name is Suzanne and I run tvmeg.com and I was wondering uh uh Lexi po um touched on this earlier but as far as the different looks that you all sported for the different time periods um uh, how was that for you? And did they give you any input at all into the into the looks? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, like you do a hair and makeup test, you know, before you start filming. And I think that, you know, during that process, that was really the process where um, I felt like I was really immersing myself into Isabella. There's something different when you're um, coming up with these hairstyles and coming up with these um, makeup looks, you know, from the ground up. And um, the entire team um, was just so open to being collaborative um, with these, with making the looks. And I think that each look for each timeline just had to be so specific um, because each character is a different version of themselves. Um, so the makeup and the hair absolutely has to reflect that. Um, but it was it was also like really great to be able to have that piece because like I said earlier, it helped us, it only helped us more um, when it came to our character arc and switching back into those, um, that certain mindset that our character was going through. Sadie? Yeah, totally agree. Um, I'm very grateful to the heads of hair and makeup and um, as well as wardrobe. They were all really collaborative. And I remember it was it was a big discussion about uh, those three different looks. Obviously, they did that really well in the first season. It helps the audience as well to be able to distinguish what what's what. Um, and yeah, it helps me too. I don't know if I would have been able to keep it as straight if I didn't have those three different looks to kind of ground me. But um, yeah, it was a big discussion about the third timeline, what we were going to do for that. Uh, there was a lot of different, a lot of different ideas that were 
come into play. Um, but yeah, I think what we ultimately landed on was was really fun and something that I'd never done before. Um, I'd never like seen myself like that before. So <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was good. Griffin, yeah. you look the same in all in the two that you did or did we do slight changes? Uh, no, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to Jack, Mo, and Brooke. That was the uh, the uh, makeup and the hair people that were that were on my team, helped me out all the time. And um, yeah, I we would come in and I would be done in about 15 minutes because there's not much you could do to the hair that's about an inch long. Um, and then my face is basically just my face, so it was pretty standard routine. Um, <laughs> every once in a while, so we would. All like we would all do like the tanner, like we would do like tanner stuff and then they would make you like more pale in the winter. Yeah, which I was like, dude, I do <laughs> not need any more help being pale. Like, <laughs> let's relax. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was mostly it. I would go from like full orange to like almost like a translucent light blue pale. Um, and that was fun. <laughs> um, that was definitely, definitely fun. Um, those are my, those are my two look changes. So I didn't have as much of a visual aid as the girls did of like, oh, this is this timeline. This is this timeline. Um, I was just like, OK, either I'm orange or I'm blue today. <laughs> and then, yeah. 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 This, this is my cues from uh, TV America. I was going to ask something different. But first of all, I got to ask you, when you're talking about the freezing cold swimming pool, what time of year was this in Vancouver when you were filming this? So, you know, you go ahead, backwards uh, it was hilarious i mean we're we're shooting all the timelines at once right but early on i think we were really summer heavy yeah uh, we were shooting that just at the end of winter so oh, like yeah. almost springtime so it was really cold okay uh, and not only really are we really cold we're also wearing summer clothes and then during the winter time it got unbelievably hot and we're all wearing four layers of sweaters and jackets Okay, thanks. And the, the thing I was going to ask Sadie, um, Sadie, you're the one person who's had a chance to get pretty close to a, a regular teen, uh, teenage years. So the other two stars were working during that time, but you had some time when you had a regular summer. What was your typical summer for you like before you became an actress? <laughs> That's a fun question. Um, yeah, I guess I, I had a pretty normal childhood growing up. I started acting when I was 16. So before that, I was just like, honestly, I remember just hanging out with my next door neighbor, Courtney, every single day. And we would like make little like videos on our phones and like make little movies. Uh, and we would like ride our bikes in the neighborhood. It was all very normal, very cute, good times. <laughs> Didn't kill anybody. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot. <laughs> that we know of. <laughs> Hi, Jenna Nagasi, Gazeta News, and Jenna on camera. Nice to see you, Sadie and Lexi again. And the question is, did you guys ever find yourselves like judging your character uh, yeah. of any, any situation or any actions that they did? And how did you separate yourself from that judgment, Griffin? <laughs> oh, well, sorry. I, I, was, I was sorry. I hopped in there way too early. But yeah, I judged Luke all the time, personally. Uh, he makes a lot of silly decisions. He's got some issues to work through. Um, and he doesn't make a, the right choice a lot of the time. But that's okay. He's young. He's dumb. He's learning. Um, but I, I always had to justify it and go, even if I don't agree, like with the clothing choices, uh, as a mild example, I'd go, I hate wearing this. This looks bad. But in my mind, in the back of my mind, I'm going, okay, but Luke likes wearing this. He feels comfortable in this. He thinks it looks good. Um, and it's like, you apply that to everything. You have to. Um, you have to be your character's own biggest advocate. Even if you personally don't agree with what they're doing, saying, or thinking, you have to recognize that at the end of the day, they believe in it full heartedly. Um, you know, that's who they are as a person. So you have to find a way to excuse it. You have to find a way to justify it to yourself so that you can justify it on screen and for the scene and for everyone else. Yep. Thank you, Alexi. Yeah, I was about to say, I was going to piggyback off of what, you know, he's saying. Um, I feel like as an actor, it's our job to be our character's keeper. And it's never our job to judge our character, regardless of what they're going through or the choices that they're making. Um, and so, you know, while obviously Lexi, myself, I may not necessarily do the same things that Isabella does. Um, I am, though, playing Isabella. And so I do have to remember that. And I have to remember that while that's something that I may not do while I step, you know, 
on my world, you know, outside of set, but this is something that this character is choosing to do and I can't judge her. Um, all you got to do is just go with the flow, go with it and trust the writer and trust that, you know, your character is somewhat making the right choices, even if you don't agree with it. Sadie, anything to add? I'm, I'm absolutely, they said it best, but yeah, you're your character's biggest advocate. You have to be, you have to love your character. I, I love Megan wholeheartedly, even though she makes some questionable decisions and, you know, she can be immature at times or, or handle things um, incorrectly, right? But what is incorrectly? She's just a teenage girl. I can understand that. I can, I can understand where she's coming from and, and why she wants what she wants. So that's what it comes down to, you know, the love that you have for this character that you're playing. Thank you. It's Monica Gleerman with Time Warner Entertainment and Sound Sunset Podcast. Griffith, Sadie, Lexi, I'm so happy to see the three of you. I love you guys. Yes. <laughs> we love you. So first I wanted to ask, in terms of, you know, just structure of a television show, it's one thing when you do flashbacks, it's another thing to do multiple timelines in every single episode. So I wanted to know how you guys, and also even filming out of order happens, obviously. So how you guys were able to kind of keep track of where you were, where your character was, what year you're in, like, you know, what month, all, like all the things, how the heck did you guys do that? And then my second part of the question is for fans, what are you most excited to see? And what are you hoping like they reminisce or like kind of that nostalgia mystery feeling that's coming from, you know, 1990s, the Y2K, the 2000, all that fun stuff. Um, yeah. Uh you, know, you, you guys want to pop in early just because I have, I feel like I'm going to have a diff different answer. <laughs> <laughs> um just because in terms of like preparation yeah it, it, it talking about like bouncing around with the shooting schedule and all that stuff it's it's really tough um and for me I didn't have the visual aids that the girls had with like the looks and all that stuff and I don't know if you guys can relate to this actually but um I I've been thinking about this and for me a big part of getting to that point and figuring out where I was in the script and 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 just with the shoot schedule that was so ridiculous, we're bouncing back and forth between timelines. I found it difficult to remember, okay, how does this scene relate to the other scenes, to the other timelines? Where does this fit in uh, occasionally? What does my character know at this point? What doesn't he know? Um, how is this affecting this? And there's certain things that we don't even know if our characters know, if they know, you know what I mean? It was, it was we hadn't gotten the rest of the scripts yet, so we don't know how it relates to the whole rest of the story. So I found it really difficult to prepare um, a lot of the times. And um, what I kind of had to end up doing, um, and I figured out like halfway through our shoot schedule is it's less important about the preparation. And it's more important to just know your character so well that you can just hop into any scene. And with these fantastic scene partners, you don't have to worry so much about all those things. And all you have to worry about is how is my character feeling in this moment, in this scene, at this time? How are they playing off of these other people? Um, and that really just kind of gave like a free reign to just feel safe and comfortable on set with experimenting, you know, trying different things. Like, I don't know if this is correct for the moment. I don't know exactly what my character's feeling or thinking because we don't have all the information. So I'm gonna put that to the side, at least personally, and I'm just going to try and exist in this scene, in this moment. Like, I, I don't know how they feel about the stuff that happened or might happen or what we know or don't know. All I know is how they feel right now in this scene, in this moment. Well, you nailed it. Thank we you. love Sorry. you. We love oh, you yeah. on the show, but you nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was a really great answer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna piggyback off of what Griffin said as well as also, um, you know, music, I feel like for me specifically helped. I had a playlist, you know, you know, for each version of Isabella. Um, and then yes, like when you set that foundation at the top, and I think that, you know, um, Elle Treatment, our, our showrunner, uh, Michelle Purple and Bill Purple, they were so great um, at the top of the season, especially um, when it came to helping us navigate um, and uncovering like who our characters really were in each timeline. So the fact that we set that foundation pretty early on, um, it helped so that when it was time for us to just have to adapt and adjust, we knew our characters kind of like the back of our hands so that it wasn't a challenge for us to do it. And then also, yeah, like the 
they're great scene partners, like being able to bounce off of their energy. Um, that makes the world's difference. Um, so I'm also just really glad that in those hard, hard scenes that I had great scene partners to be able to bounce off of. Yeah, totally. I think they totally answered that question for you. So I guess I'll answer your second question about what the fans can be excited about. I mean, if the fans loved the first season, then I really think they're going to love this season too. We have kind of all of the same um, pieces and the same formula as the first season. Um, the, we have the the relationship between these two girls. We have this crazy, devastating event that happens, um, and we have everything that unfolds after. And each episode, you get more and more confused. And each episode, you, you know, you're suspicious of a new person. So the fans can just be excited to like not have any idea what's coming next and to be shocked every episode. 